The houses in Game of Thrones are essentially the backbone of the show's intricate political and social structure. Each major noble house is a power player in the realm of Westeros, a continent inspired by medieval Europe, just with more dragons and ice zombies. First off, you've got House Stark of Winterfell. Their motto, Winter is Coming, isn't just a reminder that snowstorms are afoot. It's a grim warning that we should always be prepared for the worst. The Starks hold the North and are known for their honor and loyalty, though those can be pricey commodities in a land where deceit often wins the throne. Down in the capital, King's Landing, there's House Lannister of Casterly Rock. Hear me roar, or the more popular phrase, a Lannister always pays his debts, reflects their reputation for riches and their tendency to extend influence through gold or cunning tactics. Both seem to work until they don't. House Baratheon of Storm's End is another key player. Their words, ours is the fury, serve to remind foes that their ancestral legacy includes a storm god. The Baratheons got the throne after a rebellion, and they've been trying to keep a grip on it like it's a greased pig at a state fair. Let's not forget about House Targaryen, whose last surviving members spent most of the series trying to fly back into power like a boomerang. Fire and blood isn't just a cool tattoo. For them, it's the law of life involving dragons and conquest. The Targaryens are the house most people remember because, well, dragons are hard to forget. Then there are other noble houses like Tyrell, Martell, Tully, Aaron, and so many more. Each has its own set of values, schemes, and lush color palettes for their regalia. It's a high fashion, high fatalities type of society. What makes Game of Thrones home so fascinating isn't just their sigils and mottos, it's the characters that represent them. They're a mix of ambition, courage, treachery, and heart, blended and served over ice, fire, war, and weddings. Many, many weddings. Living in Portland, where we have our own unique mix of houses and a thriving cultural backdrop, I can't help but draw parallels to the community spirit and the rich personalities that define our neighborhoods. However, while we duke out our differences in farmers' markets and community centers, rather than on battlefields, the potency of identity and tribal loyalty is no less strong. Think of Game of Thrones houses like complex medieval versions of modern-day sports teams, each with die-hard fans, histories of glory and defeat, and a desire to come out on top, no matter what the cost. And just like our local Portland soccer or basketball teams, when we rally behind our house colors, it can unite or divide us in the most passionate of ways.